And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're talking about Story War. Now, Story War is a game from Cantrip Games. It's basically a party game where you are telling stories. And the story is all about how you beat up other people using all sorts of mythological and interesting creatures fighting against other creatures. Uh, it goes all the way up to eight players. It's pretty quick as you just battle. You know what? Let me just show you how the game plays and then we'll come back. Alright, in this game there are three stacks of cards. There are these location cards. So let's show you some examples. Here we have the Underworld. Uh, underneath that is the Beanstalk. Which, um, then underneath here we have the, the Candy Prison. And the Library. And the Clock Tower. And then there's some flavor text on each of those. Like here, the fabric of space has been caught in the gears of time. Then we have items. It's the blue deck, the invisibility ring, or a tempest in a teapot, or a pickaxe, or a flying carpet, or a mithril tux. Everyone needs a mithril tux. And finally, the biggest uh, stack of cards is the character's deck of cards. And so we have, for example, here, the kraken, and the witch, and the Rat King, and the Phoenix, and the Behemoth, and the Nymph, and the Wizard, and King Midas, and a Vampire, and a Yeti, and a Treant, and a Cockatrice, and a Werewolf, and a Sky Whale, and a Zombie, etc, etc, etc. Alright, so each player is going to get three of these cards, three of the character cards, and they're going to get two item cards, and then uh, one person is going to be the judge. The person who owns the game will be the judge first, and then people will take turns being the judge. Now, depending on how many players, you'll split into teams. If there's three or four players, the, the rest of the players are by themselves. Otherwise, you split it evenly into teams, and there's possibly a maverick who can join either team. So what the judge will do is the judge will say, All right, your battlefield is the Foggy Bog. Ready? Fight! So everyone has to fight now in the foggy bog. So what players are going to do is they're all going to pick. So let's say it's two on two. And so each of the teams picks two characters. So this team has picked a bone dragon and a unicorn. And we are using a witch and a kraken in the foggy bog. And at that point, you just go at it. You can do whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. And everything you say is true unless the judge tells you otherwise. So I could say, for example, the Kraken reaches out and grabs the Bone Dragon and pulls him underneath, snapping bones. Now, the guy who owns the Bone Dragon might argue about that and say, no, I start flying and I'm stronger than the Kraken. I'll say, judge, there's no way he's stronger. This is my home territory. And the judge will say, you're right and agree with me or not agree with me. And then I'll say the witch, and then I th throw down an item. Each team can use one item. So I say she climbs into her pumpkin chariot and goes off and goes to fight the unicorn. I say, but this unicorn hurls a thunder hammer. Okay, so you just, you're just basically making up stories and, and using the background and things. If you manage to weaken an opponent or wound them or whatever, you turn them sideways, and if you take them out of the picture, yeah, you know, kill them, imprison them, scare them away, whatever, you turn them over, and if you can do that to the other team, then you win, and each person on your team gets a victory point. Then someone else is the judge. You actually make new teams each time, and you'll go on and on and on uh, doing that. Of course, they, this is how the game goes. The, after everyone's been the judge, then whoever has the most victory points is the winner. The, the rules, though, you can do certain things. You can do court of law and say these people are suspects in a murder. Um, true love. Yeah, okay. Well, basically, you get the idea. This is a storytelling game, and these cards are used to do that. All right, Story War. Well, it's a storytelling game, which comes with its inherent strengths and weaknesses. The strengths of a storytelling game is that for creative people, it is an absolute fun thing, and the cards just basically give you a framework to play off, and you tell these stories and arguments and debate and have this really cool time. 
The weakness, of course, is, is that the judge, is, in this game especially, is allowed to be completely capricious and make whatever decisions they want. And, you know, so you're, you're kind of playing to the judge. And if you have anybody in the group who's even a little bit gamey, in a sense, it can really throw off the balance of the game. Okay, well, those inherent strengths and weaknesses come with any storytelling game, and there are quite a few of them out there. Once Upon a Time is probably the most famous, but there's several. This one's different, of course, because it's about a war. Although it's not the first one like this, uh, there was a game that came out several years ago called Stupid Duel, which did essentially the same thing, although I believe it was only limited to two people, not this totally wild brawl. Speaking of Totally Wild Brawl, if you have a lot of people playing this game, it really does get weird and strange and yelling and chaotic and all sorts of things going on. And that is going to appeal to a lot of people. Other people, it's going to chase away. Am I dancing around my opinion of this? Well, let me tell you this. I don't mind the idea of a story game. I understand the flaws of them and I understand you have to go into it just to have fun. And that you have to play it with the right group of people. People who are creative and interesting and like to go back and forth on these things and have fun. Okay, that's all well and good. However, if I'm going to do such a thing, I want to be able to use this as a framework, which this game does. It has a bunch of cool locations, has a bunch of cool items, although that the rule of only one item per side is, seems this capriciously odd rule. Why not use as many items as you want? What does it matter? But anyway... The, the artwork is good. The, they, they picked a good pick of heroes and villains and weapons and things to fight with and locations. It's cool. But, but, there's just so little. There's so little of it. If you're going to give me a game like this with a framework that I'm going to build stories on, then give me 200 different heroes. Give me 50 different locations. Give me 100 different items. Make this a game that we can come to time and time again. Honestly, you are going to see almost everything in this game after one, definitely two playings of it. Uh, my first game of it, we saw almost everything come out. And then it's like you're seeing the same stuff and hearing the same stuff. And that might be entertaining, but if I'm going to play a story game and you're saying, well, you, you, this is just the, the, the bouncing pad to go off and do your own stories. Fantastic. Okay, that's great. I understand that. So give me more then. Give me lots of different ideas. Give me a wide variety. Because if, if, if you're not going to give me that wide variety, then why, don't I, why do I even need this? Just give everyone a card and have you write down a warrior. I'll write down Ghost Ninja on mine. And over here, he writes Six-Headed Giraffe. You know, they, they, you know, we can write all kinds of cool things. And if that's the case, then I don't need the game. So you want me to get the game, right? You want me to get Story Wars. You want me to have this game. So if you want me to have this game and use it for this storytelling battle party royale, then you got to make it full of depth and have a lot in it. Otherwise, it's not worth getting. And that is actually what I'm saying here is I don't think it's worth getting. I like the idea. I think the concept of telling stories is fine. It's not really a game. It's more of a social activity, but that's fine. I just don't think there's enough here. Good art, cool things, flavor text was fun. Just, just too little of it. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! 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 Shut the door!